Hello everyone and welcome, my name is Jeff and today we're going to have some fun playing Magic and we are playing some No Cat Sack because Cauldron Familiar is now banned from the standard format and that kind of disrupts a lot of the Rakdos Sacrifice deck. Uh, it takes away a lot of just kind of the chip and damage you can typically get out of the deck. And so I wanted to go ahead and try to build a new version, adding in a little bit of the white color here to add in Mardu uh, to play things like Cruel Celebrant to just get an incremental damage as well as utilize Mothra here to be able to uh, keep getting creatures back over and over again to sacrifice more things get in for damage with mayhem devils cruel celebrants and kind of go for more of the bastion of remembrance type of play here so i i'm excited to see how this deck works out i've not actually tested it yet but i do think this one's fun so before i jump into the full uh thing here just a quick update on me right now so we were all ready to go to the hospital to get uh induced labor for my wife and unfortunately they called us like just beforehand like you know what we're booked since you guys can go into labor naturally we're just gonna you know postponing it for a little bit which is cool that's great and all but now we're just waiting again and we got postponed so uh i'm not recording this on stream i think this is the first time in a while that i've recorded stuff not on stream um i'm hoping to do a little bit better with my recording to make sure that i'm, I'm getting a little bit more of this kind of stuff so that's a little bit more of, of me i'm wanting to record more stuff like this for you guys and see if you guys enjoy it more than the doing the ones on stream it's nice uh what especially when i'm busy all that kind of stuff to be able to do both at once but i i want to make sure i'm getting good content out for you guys all right let's dive into the deck as far as what pieces are in here and why so no cat sack by the way if you guys ever wanted to jump ahead to the gameplay or if you want to put me on double speed i i do that to other youtubers so i understand it it makes sense that's what you can do uh you can also look down below and there's uh in the in the time bar i always make sure that the the matches are put in order so you guys can actually watch that down here uh and also down in the description uh you can go ahead and just click to which game you guys want to go to uh so yeah you can do that that's fine anyway so diving into this deck why each card is in this deck so uh first off hunted witness serrated scorpion we needed creatures that we can use for a priest of forgotten gods i really like hunted witness with mothra as well as serrated scorpion because we can sacrifice him multiple times to woe strider uh to be able to get just a bunch of triggers priest of forgotten gods is just one of the most busted cards in this deck it is so powerful it's one of those cards where if you stick it on turn two they don't have removal they don't really have interaction for what we are doing then this will run away with games pretty consistently Consistently. Being able to add the additional damage with Cruel Celebrant and Bastion of Remembrance to the two damage that is dealt here or the two damage serrated, serrated Scorpion, you can end up doing a lot of damage really quick with this deck. We get to add in a lot of card draw with Village Rights here as well, which is good for interaction of people trying to kill our stuff. We can just, you know, sacrifice a Priest of Forgotten Gods uh, and, and, you know, get two cards out of the deal anyway. Two copies of Claim the Firstborn. I decided not to go for the full four because it wasn't worthwhile to be playing the Witch's Oven, which added more consistency to be able to actually sacrifice and remove creatures on their on their end we do still have woe strider and priest of forgotten gods to be able to sacrifice stuff so it is still worth having and even not that way like we can even just play this onto a gadrak and have it be hasting in for five points of damage on turn four so there are some good reasons to have it in the deck even outside of just being able to sac sacrifice stuff to witch's oven so two copies i think was right i might go like three and three here i'm really not sure like the numbers exactly i'm going to play this deck exactly how it is but just so you guys know you can definitely make changes to the deck uh there's definitely things that based off meta based off everything going like the the world has changed now with standard since uh teferi has gone willis reclamation gone growth spiral and college of familiar are all gone so it changes things up quite a bit i still think this is a powerful deck because we have all of the pieces mayhem devil cruel celebrant priest of forgotten gods bastion remembrance a lot of ways to kind of get in for chip and damage towards face uh we also get to have so bastion remembrance like i was saying really good powerful card it's similar to cruel celebrant effect where whenever something dies we gain a life they lose life it allows us to play a few more shock lands in the deck i was actually debating and bringing uh full play set of the other kind as well but fable passage is so good with mayhem devil that i wanted to make sure that we had the fable passages in here so we just went for the ones that focus on black mana because black is definitely more heavy in this deck than the red or white we're kind of splashing in red for a few cards and splashing in white for a few cards so kind of staying heavy on black i think that actually adds for consistency we get to add in the savai tri uh, triome uh for going three colors i know it's a tap land but the being able to cycle every once in a while is really nice uh so i think two copies is right there then we have call of death weller which works great with mayhem devil works great with just bringing back our priest of forgotten gods something else uh and also being able to go off again with mothra every once in a while with this card so i think two copies is right here as well uh being able to 
Put a death, death touch counter onto Mayhem Devil means that we can basically Gatling gun, just one damage kill any creature on the opponent's side of the board once we have a death touch counter onto this. You know, so it's just, it's really powerful. Woe Strider lets us sacrifice more things. Gadrak letting us create a bunch of treasure tokens, which works great with Mayhem Devil to be able to then sacrifice a bunch of stuff. So if we do kill a lot of our creatures with Woe Strider and Mothra or whatever at the end of the turn, uh, during the turn, then all of a sudden everything dies. And at the end beginning of our end step, we create a bunch of treasures we still have a mayhem devil we get to just start firing off with all of those treasures as well so there are some pretty cool synerg synergies with that gadrak is just one of those cards that didn't quite fit in because you needed four copies of of cat needed four copies of witch's oven and so it didn't really fit into the rakdos version quite yet on this deck we are trying to build more of a board initially we, we're going to be going off with priest of and gods if we find it but otherwise you might just be playing a bunch of creatures out and gadrak will be really nice to kind of have uh if we just find the wolf strider hunted witness kind of the other game plan of this so we can create a bunch of treasures hope to find our mayhem devil and just kind of like at any time be able to do 10 points of damage or something like that like that's the kind of thing that gadrag can do for us in this game and so uh, a really powerful card i think also just being able to have it be a 5-4 flyer attacker we're going to be getting him down to 10 points of damage uh, you know 10 10 life left uh with all the other creatures pretty consistently so if we do get to have enough artifacts and everything on the board which we we do lose not being able to attack as easily with uh not having the the witch's oven so we'll see this is a card that i'm not positive should fit into the deck but i wanted to try it out i wanted to see how it does i want to be playing m21 cards you know all that stuff uh and so going into it uh of course woe strider ma'am devil you guys know all the reasons for that so that is basically the deck so let's go ahead and jump into the gameplay see how it does for us and wish me luck up against kimri man having white mana here would be amazing um I could still hold on to Mayhem Devil and Gadrak. Like, this isn't a bad hand. So I will keep it. We'll hope to find a white source in the next turn. Play Book Crypt Tap, pass the turn. This is the biggest issue with going uh, three colors instead as well. All right, so Mayhem Devil with Fable Passage can actually kill Gutter Bones. We can get a treasure and use the white mana there. So I don't think that we actually go for... Um, like the hunted witness for the next turn we, we're gonna play gadrag yeah so this will this will actually be really good then we get to play the hunted witness after the fact okay so freebooter takes our village rights rude having all the information is good for them all right play gadrag pass the turn they could have swift end that might be necessary for them. We still have a good play regardless for the next turn. Mayhem Devil, Fable Passage, play Hunted Witness, get to kill the Gutter Bones. Okay, so they have Swift End. Rude. <laughs> Alright, take it down to 15. Ooh, another Gadrak. That is interesting. That does open up a few more possibilities. Let's play it again. Um... We get to actually kill Kite Cell Freebooter for the next turn now. So yeah, pass the turn. If they have another removal spell, we're kind of fine with them playing it on Gadrak. Gadrak is only really does one thing, you know? Pass to my turn. All right, so play Fable Passage, play Mayhem Devil. Activate, grab white mana. Kill Gutter Bones. Actually, no, I guess we are going for the Kite Self Rebooter. Grab um, White Mana. Play Hunted Witness. Grab Black Mana. So we can play the Village Rites or Strated Scorpion. Which one do we want? Um. Village rights means that we get to get more treasures. Let's go ahead and hold on to the end step here. So yeah, village rights hit hunted witness. Kill gutter bones, get another treasure. Draw a couple cards. Resolve, four, uh, three treasures, not four. All right, um, and pass the turn. We'll take one, that's fine. 
That's a good turn. It really isn't that bad. All right, resolve. Whiffs. We'd like it. They could have another swift end. I'm not sure what they actually hit here. Probably Mayhem Devil. Swings in. We're one treasure away from having the ability to actually attack in. But I think at this point, I'm... I'm really not sure if it's better to be holding on to that. We don't have any other sacrifice outlets. I can use Fable Passage to kill Mayhem Devil and all of these guys. I I think I'd rather send more damage face. Like, Gadrak is really hard to actually attack in with. Um, so we did exactly what we wanted to out of this. And we can still kill Spawn of Mayhem and have a lot of mana. So Mothra would be amazing here. Woe Strider, also not the worst. All right, play Fable Passage. Play Serrated Scorpion. Play, I guess, Woe Strider here. I, it doesn't really matter, does it? So, Woe Strider. All right, so let's go ahead and sack here. Grab another planes. Um, next attack in with the one one and mayhem devil, I guess. We can kill it if we need to. They block the mayhem devil. We at least get in for one more point of damage, just guaranteed this way. Um, let's go ahead and sack here. Call the Death Dweller is really nice. Gets back Gadrak. Um, which means I may not want to get rid of too many treasures. Actually, I could have just been able to bring back the Mayhem Devil as well with the Death Touch counter. And all the treasures here. Uh, we can do that on a later turn, I guess. Um, yep, sacrifice here. And kill it. All right. Sorry, thinking it all the way through and seeing that we had a few more options. Pass the turn. We can th do three damage at any point here. I guess four. Pass to my turn. Call the Death Dweller actually works well if they do have any kind of removal. So let's go ahead and swing in for seven. Two turn clock here. What you got? Mobilized District can turn on. Okay. Um, do we want them to block here? We can call the Death Dweller, bring back Mayhem Devil. It's a non token creature, so I can just kill it, bring back Gadrak, get another treasure. Get in for six. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so. They could still have like an eliminate here. We're getting rid of all of our, all of our fodder. Black Lance Paragon comes out, all right. Uh, this is fine. Now if they block, let's see who they block. Either way, we're still actually in pretty decent shape. To the bottom. They block one of them, gain three. We deal three. We get back either Mayhem Devil. Um, yeah, we'll see here. So I guess in this case, we sacrifice Mayhem Devil to make sure they don't gain the three life. Ooh. All right, that's cool. Now, what do we want, actually? Now we can get back straight at Scorpion Hunted Witness with Rose Rider and Mothra. Call the Strain tapped. Call the Death Dweller. Uh, let's just go for Mam Devil. We still have the ability sack itself, so any big creature is still dead. They're top decking for something here, uh, and we'll pass the turn. 
Mothra is going to be pretty annoying for them as, to deal with as well. We just have good damage dealers on board. They can play out Murder Shrider. Have something held up. Yeah, they have to do damage to us before they can bring Gutter Bones back to hand. They had some response though, so I'm assuming they might have something like an Eliminate. We're going to play out Mothra first. Alright, so now if anything bad does happen, we're fine. Um, swing with Mayhem Devil. We'll swing with War Strider next turn when we can actually bring it back. Menace. Down to 8 past the turn. Lethal on board. Or I guess not quite. Timoret. Alright, gets to re gain some life. Exile our graveyard. Woe Strider won't be quite as useful. Okay, pass to my turn. Village rights. Interesting. Alright, so swing in here and here. Uh, I'm going to let them go ahead and go for the trade. We get to kill two creatures. Um, yeah, I think this is fine. We can village rights bring back Woe Strider as well. Actually here, this is this is what we do. Alright, so now they're done. We actually sacrifice Woe Strider. We get to kill one of them. Bring back Woe Strider, comes here. Let's go ahead and stop them from having damage. I, I should have done this earlier. I totally missed the play. Hit Murderous Rider. Passion of Remembrance and Woe Strider. Yeah, okay. We had the game actually on that turn then. All right, up against Tauk number one. Bring it. So we have Priest, Cruel Celebrant, Bastion Remembrance. A lot of good cards. No red mana, but we're going to keep this. It's like, this is kind of how our deck is supposed to run. We only have 22 lands in the deck. It's fine if we have two lands, only two lands in the opening hand. It's not that big a deal. Um, let's go ahead and, yeah, get out Priest of Forgotten Gods. Pass the turn. Best play is probably to get out Woe Strider or Bastion of Remembrance on the next turn. Uro, okay. Yep, lots of ramp. Soltai ramp is definitely one of the best decks out there right now. We're on the play or on the draw against them is also a little bit awkward. All right, cruel celebrant, pass the turn. Straighted Scorpion would be nice to play as well. Yeah, I think that... Unfortunately, this is kind of how standard's going right now. You can almost determine the fate of a game um, pretty early on at this point. Wolf of Haven comes out. Okay. Ritual of Soot. We get to do two points of damage, at least. Down to 19, and still no lands. And this is the issue with having 22 lands in the deck. Every once in a while, you just won't top deck lands. You won't get them. Um, but as we've seen with the game so far, like I have still been hitting lands pretty consistently. Untaps forest, swings in. Uh, we'll say no blocks. We're just going to wait for one more draw. If this isn't a land, there's no way we can come back. If it is a land... I think we're still so far behind, it's really hard to say. Um, a good blocker like Gadrak, though, could be pretty nice. Into Woe Strider, create a bunch of treasures for Mayhem Devil. Like, we can kind of start going off a little bit in a couple turns. So, Gadrak first, have a good blocker, no attacks. Do they have any answers whatsoever? That's the question. If they do, we did. If they don't, we're probably... We may have a small chance of coming back. <laughs> oh, wow. 
Wow. All right, catch these of war. Yeah, I think that we're done there. We're done there. All right, up against Apaco Mu, bring it on. And we're going to go ahead and keep this hand. Priest of Forgotten Gods with Claim the Firstborn is nice, Ma'am Devil. Uh, we are on the draw, a little bit slower hand, but that also works well with kind of what we've got going on here. So this will be good. Uh, that's a lot of Fable Passages. We will lead off with one so we can make sure we get to Ma'am Devil on turn three. Shocking ourselves a few times for that, still not bad. That, however, is bad. All right, so I'm actually cracking this now because uh, I, I'm kind of testing out a theory um, that almost every time that I see um, that, that I crack Fable Passage, the next card on top is a land. And there you have it. It's a land again. Therefore, we get rid of another land and we're in great shape. All right, so let's go ahead and I hate shocking ourselves against this. This is Gruul Aggro, which is a sweet deck. Uh, we don't really need white yet, so let's go ahead and shock this in. Priest of Forgotten Gods, pass the turn. Um, the best thing would be one of our one drops, and then claim the Firstborn Sacrifice. That would be amazing. Let's see if they just have Domri's Ambush. Yeah, they do. Yeah, being on the draw against this deck is a really hard matchup all the time. The fact that they can just play our Mayhem Devil also going to be very bad for us. Gadget can come in and be a better blocker, maybe, than Mayhem Devil. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Pass the turn. We have found a lot of lands. We're only running 22 lands in the deck, so six lands this early in the game is not what we're looking for. We want to be kind of stopping around three lands. We want to be hitting la three lands about every single game. Um, and then getting up to four lands, hopefully by the time Mothra comes around, and we're just hoping that we hit the right numbers and everything to make it work. All right, they get to play the Mayhem Devil. I am going to go ahead and block here. Plays the Mayhem Devil. Do they have any sacrifice stuff? New. No. So we don't have any sacrifice outlets either. Like a Woe Strider into Claim the Firstborn would be amazing. Uh, let's go ahead and play out Fable Passage, thin out our deck a little bit more. I mean, in theory, we should be thinning out our deck, but Fable Passage will probably just give us another land because that's what we keep seeing happen. Uh, so pass the turn, hold off here. They uh, they get a ping in damage with Fable Passage as well. We're down to 13. Claim the first one gives us six points of damage. I'm trying to think of... Hmm. Domri's Ambush. Rude. All right, if they swing in, we will go ahead and trade here. Scavenging Ooze is really annoying. So we can ping and trade. I can also play another Fable Passage and just kill the Scavenging Ooze. Still the Mayhem Devil. Actually, maybe do something like that. Um, yeah, no blocks. We'll take it. Down to nine. Give me a sack outlet. That would be amazing. Pass to my turn. Well, it's a sack outlet for a later turn. All right, so we're going to take some damage. That's fine. Fable Passage. Kill the ooze. Uh, yeah, resolve. Grab another mountain. Activate. Hit here. I guess we can grab a planes. We have two of everything else, so we're fine. Let us be able to bring up the Mothra if it comes up. All right, so play planes. We shouldn't have that many more lands in the deck, so. So, we should be good, right? <laughs> All right, Priest of Forgotten Gods. I could, hmm. So play the Priest. And pass the turn.
This is so many lands in our deck. Again, only 22 lands in the deck. We are staying in the game. We get dealt with a lot of good... Oh, man. Oh, boy. All right, so if I block block, we can kill this one. They only get to kill one of our creatures. We can still hope to find like Woe Strider. Uh, we can't actually claim the Firstborn um, Questing Beast though. I could just block here with Questing Beast. We got to find an answer for that later. We're just going to try to stay alive for this turn, make the best play we can. If they put Priest of Forgotten Gods in the lead, that's cool. We have some chances to still kill Questing Beast on the next turn. Cruel Celebrant. Okay. We have zero sacrifice outlets. Yay. Play this tap, play Cruel Celebrant. Pass the turn. Oh, man. Yeah, this has just gone horribly wrong the entire time. Nothing right has happened yet. Swings in. We have to block with Mayhem Devil. I'm, I'm guessing this game is already over. I'm going to stick in it because, I mean, our deck has the ability to turn things around if we draw anything worthwhile. Many, many a land. So, Horn Beetle's going to get massive for the next turn. Play Mayhem Devil. Yeah, I, I think that we didn't draw enough stuff. So, we can still this swing in. They still on top with it. They swing back. We can chump here, block here, and then we're still dead. We don't find anything off the top that actually helps us. So, now we can say that game's over. All right, up against Fastum and Amazing Hand, but that's how it usually looks when you don't have any lands. Mulligan. And yeah, that's it's actually not the worst. We can play both of these on turn two. So keep this, let's drop. Now what do we drop? I guess we actually probably drop the Hunted Witness uh, because we can start playing these on turn three and that's just better. So yeah, play that, play Savai Tri, actually wait, no, play Scorpion, then Triome. Uh, the one downside is that we are losing the chance to play Priest of Forgotten Gods on turn two, which is usually the best play you can have. That's fine, though. All right, no attacks past the turn. I probably should have attacked, actually. They're going to grow it for sure. Scavenging use. Yeah, uh-huh. No blocks. Claim the Firstborn with Woe Strider for the next turn. Um, so we play Mayhem Devil this turn. Next turn, we can Woe Strider and play Claim the Firstborn. No attacks past the turn. Good game. Oh, nice. Thank you. I appreciate it. Gadrak also kind of interesting here. We could wait and play Gadrak as well. Um, and then have that for the turn we Woe Strider. We get to sacrifice so many creatures with a token as well. So this is, this is definitely a greedy play, but I'm gonna go for it. No attacks past the turn. Uh, so what all counts for this? At the beginning of our step, uh, create a token, a treasure token for each non-token creature that has turned. So the goat doesn't work with it, but that's fine. They do swing in. Um, I think that we can end up making enough sacrifice triggers and everything to kill the questing beast. So let's say no blocks. Down to 14. All right, so play Woe Strider. Play Claim the Firstborn. Snag Pelt Collector. Um, next, go to combat, swing in with Pelt Collector. Do I want to see? No, I think we just swing at that. We want to actually sacrifice everything else. So they're probably going to have to take this to face. If they block with Questing Beast, we get to for sure kill cut Questing Beast. At the same time, though, they're taking three points of damage here. We will sacrifice it. We will get more treasures. We will get to do more damage to Questing Beast and probably kill it anyway. Uh, but then they can keep the ooze up. So, yeah, that's fine. All right. So takes it. Now we will sacrifice Pell Collector. All right, so how many sacrifice triggers do we have? Um, 
I'm debating if I want to kill the scavenging goose instead here, because we still have Gadrak to block the questing beast, and that's fine. So let's actually go ahead and make sure their life total can't go up. Uh, yeah, we'll keep that. That's good. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and put a stop on our end step as well. Sacrifice the goat. Kill the ooze. Yeah, keep that. Sacrifice serrated scorpion. All right, so we know that we have three creatures. Actually, so uh, ooze, two here. So we actually do get three treasures to kill the questing beast. So we could go all in there. I think it's actually worthwhile. All right, so kill questing beast. Keep it there. End turn. Resolve that. Now sacrifice some treasures. All right, so uh, yeah, sacrifice. Hit Questing Beast, Sacrifice, Hit Questing Beast, Sacrifice, Hit Questing Beast. Just doing it all now so we don't have as many triggers. All right, so Gadrak works. We've dis we discovered that. All right, pass the turn. <laughs> we have a really great turn next turn. Cruel Celebrant and Priest of Forgotten Gods. Oh, my easing. Pelt Collector, another Questing Beast. I kind of figured that might be coming. That's cool. Do we block now is the question. Gadrak is nice, but I think that keeping him off of anything actually good is also good for us. They're going to have two cards left. We get uh, some really solid stuff going next turn. Crates a 3-3. That's cool. Pass to my turn. All right, Cruel Celebrant. Priest of Forgotten Gods. Um, I might swing in with the Mayhem Devil or maybe the Will Strider here. Because we have another sacrifice outlet. If we get rid of this, we almost guaranteed kill something with Priest of Forgotten Gods on the next turn. I I think we try to still hold on to it though. Three cards in hand. I guess the worst thing here is like an Elder Gargaroth. Nissa who shakes the world. Alrighty. Primal Might, so they fight each other. Um, all right, so we can actually kill Pelt Collector with this. So let's go ahead and just do that. So sacrifice Cruel Celebrant. Hit Pelt Collector. Now they fight another Priest of Forgotten Gods. We might be looking for something bigger and better. We don't have a ton of colors, though, so I guess we still keep it. All right, so Pell Collector dies. They're tapped down. We get to swing at Nissa now. So swing Wolf Strider in. Let us talk peace. Um... We can get rid of forest. They still attack with so much mana, though. The issue here is, like, do we want to be able to draw a card and see if it's something worth playing? Let's go ahead and do it now. We need some big hits to really have a shot here. Land also isn't the worst. We actually get to play Will Strider right now. I should have grabbed white mana. We only ever need one red source. Uh, you know what? Let's actually make sure we get rid of creatures because they do have scavenging oozes. So, yeah. Play Rose Rider, pass the turn. Now we have a blocker for the forest. Let's just hope they don't have anything massive. This could be an Ugin. Ugins are bad. The Great Henge. Okay. Could have had more mana. Yeah, I don't know. All right. Another forest. Well, yeah, they get a big ooze. Pass to my turn. Okay, another Priest of Forgotten Gods. How many cards do we have in the graveyard here? Um... 
So they definitely double blocked to, to kill Nissa or to kill the Woe Strider here. Um, if we can kill both creatures, does that actually matter? Great Hinge comes out. They get to start creating more creatures. We can still play Woe Strider, but only if we sacrifice stuff after the fact, uh, which we can still also do. So let's go ahead and swing in. Kill scavenging use. Sweet. Yeah, it makes it big. That's fine. How big can they make it, though? We did take out all of our creatures. They still have a ton, though. All right. Now we also can't bring back Woe Strider. Mm hmm. All right, now do we let it go to damage? They've already used up their mana. We'll end up losing mana if we end up doing it now. What can we find though? There's there's a lot of good stuff we can still find. Let's go ahead and do it now. Even like a Gadrak would be pretty nice here. Hits the Woe Strider. We're just kind of in desperation mode now. I know that this game is over if we can't find something here. And that's not it. Pass the turn. Mono Green is a really hard mark matchup for us, I feel like. Um, just because they can put up such big walls. And they have kind of insane life gain. That's a big serpent. All right, we're done here. Yeah, that, that game is over. Um, all right, we can peakles or peakless, and we will keep this. Kind of slow lands, but we're on the play, uh, so it hurts a little bit less. We have a chance of still finding other lands as well, like an untapped land would be amazing here. Or a cruel celebrant priest, claim the firstborn, sweet stuff. If we can also get down Mothra before we fire that off, hoo -hoo -hoo. yeah, yeah, that'd be great. All right, I am hoping that we hit another land here. Play the try on, pass the turn. If not, we definitely have a much slower hand. Um, if it's an untapped land, great. Oh. Against flyers. Flyers will be hard. Go Priest of Forgotten Gods, pass the turn. Untapped. Yeah, untapped land also gives us claim the firstborn cruel celebrant sacrifice something I, again I think we probably do want to wait with Mothra being able to give all of our stuff flying to block stuff is really nice That is untapped land So cruel celebrant So I could get rid of their entire board here by playing claim the firstborn Sacrificing these two, they they lose this one, and we get in for a bunch of damage. Is that worthwhile, though? Or should we wait for Mothra to kind of do more stuff here? Uh, we also get to draw a card. Let's go ahead and just do it. I'll pull the trigger. Swing in with Watcher. They can't actually block. Down to 16. Target you. Submit you two. Two more points of damage. Gain some life. Lose the Pegasus. Down to 12. And we get another Priest of Forgotten Gods. Yes! Beautimus. Beautiful. Mothra on the next turn has an amazing blocker against them. If they have any kind of removal, we're still fine. Not leaving up mana for the Lofty Denial. So let's find, I guess, red mana. We already have two white. Play Mothra. Good blocker. Pass the turn. So they could have Rally of Wings. 
uh, which we can still block this one because they have to attack with both. So pass to my turn. That's that's cool. Passion of Remembrance. Oh boy. All right, we are in amazing shape here. All right, let's grab black mana. Bastion of Remembrance. Yeah, uh-huh. Ooh, this is so good. <laughs> so we get like four extra mana here, a couple extra draws. We are going to do it on our main phase because I'd like to be able to play more things. Potentially, like, Serrated Scorpions would be busted here. Oh, they got it. All right. Locked it in aisle. Annoying. Play another Priest of Forgotten Gods. All right. That one lands. We are going to go ahead and go for it here. Um, it's two other creatures, unfortunately. Being able to have the Bastion would have been really nice because I could have sacrificed again with this Priest of Forgotten Gods. Uh, you know what? Let, let's go ahead and cancel. We can do that on their turn. And now I don't really care as much about hitting the, hitting, hitting the land. So pass the turn. Attacking in might have been decent there. We also get some pretty sweet blockers. Weaned words gets to draw some cards. Yeah, Lofty Denial is such a good card. Adds so much value for what they're doing. As another planes. Still holding up Lofty Denial, potentially. Let's go ahead and pass to my turn. Serrated Scorpion. Great. Do you deny that? That is a question. We have the mana to pay for it. I think that we probably keep this around. Um, even if they do go for the denial. All right, so now target you. Sack here, sack here. Make him lose a creature, draw a card. Hunted Witness is pretty, pretty swell. And Pony Scoops up. There we go. Sweet. <laughs> oh, man, this deck. All right, so up against Kajitan Kusina. And we have Village Rides Claim the Firstborn, which is a pretty good play. It lets us draw some cards, get rid of something. On the draw, that might actually be quick enough. So let's go ahead and just keep this. If we can find some extra lands through that. I mean, we're, we're really banking on them having creatures, which they're playing the right colors for it. Uh, I guess we play Hunted Witness now. Pass the turn. We're shocking ourselves a lot against a red deck. We'll see how this goes. All right, so we can play Cruel Celebrant with untapped land. Save this for later. We can also Woe Strider, get a few other things going for us. Okay, Cruel Celebrant. Um, no attacks past the turn. Robber of the Rich. Annoying. You get to steal something. Ooh, the worst thing, too. We might even wait for them to bring that back. So if they cast Mayhem Devil, we gain control of target creature until end of turn. It doesn't say it goes back to its owner at the end step. So I'm not sure if we actually still maintain it. Um, which one are we more worried about now? It might be the the robber of the rich. Just to kind of get rid of the mayhem devil. Like the issue though is like they will probably play out mayhem devil. Um, which then we can steal it. I'm not sure how it works. I think that because they cast it, it'll go back to them. I'm actually, you know, I'm wanting to do this for science. I think that this will end up playing out this way. So play this out past the turn. We do get to gain some life so we can kind of slow the game down a smidge. Uh, the issue here is not dealing with Runaway Steamkin. Okay. Uh, not playing the Mayhem Devil out just yet. Oh, that's rude. All right. 
That's cool. Now they have the runaway steamkin as well. It's a Gadrak. All right, so now they can play Mayhem Devil with the Runaway Steamkin. Which I think is their best play. Gadrak could be okay as well. They killed a lot of things. They get a bunch of treasures. Plays Annex instead. All right, intriguing. All right, claim the Firstborn. Snag ya. Swing in. Village rights. Yeah, I, I tried to play that a little bit safer and it definitely came back to bite us. Triome tap, pass the turn. Um, I mean, we still are decently high in life total. Like we can find some other stuff, but man, that's a lot of lands. It's amazing how last game, you know, only two lands the entire time. Now we have seven up against the aggro deck, of course. All right, so we do chump, we do block on the runaway steamkin, uh, just because, actually, we know they can't cast anything else. If this is land into something else, it would've been nice, but whatever. All right, so we can play Woe Strider out as a d good blocker. Uh, we can play Bastion and Priest so that we can actually start getting removal. We have to shock ourselves to do that, though. If they have Embercleave, we're dead for, to this. If not, it's a pretty good preemptive play, I feel like. Um, to set us up for some success. So, pass the turn. Scorch Bitter. Okay. Six mana. <laughs> Torbran. No Embercleave, but this still isn't looking great. <laughs> Alright, so we're taking four, f uh, five there. So, nine. Um, no life gain with this. Will Strider Crimson. If we find Mayhem Devil as well, we can kill enough things. It might be worthwhile. So, yeah, we just chomp. Gain one life. Call the Death Dweller. Bring back Mayhem Devil. No, we actually haven't found one dead yet. Okay. Um. Yeah, just in desperation mode. I, I'm really not sure what all we can do here. We get to gain four life here. We're trying to dig for like a Woe Strider or something. Because the life total does go pretty low. That is another land. All right, bring back Woe Strider. How much life can we see? One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we actually got him. Wow, we actually got him. <laughs> All right, sweet. Oh man, sure. Wow. Okay, I did not expect to actually win this match. Uh, like you said, stay, stay with it a little bit. That is so many lands. Every once in a while, you can actually pull stuff off. And then, Woe Strider killed Cruel Celebrant for the last two points of damage. And good game. Wow! Whoo! Oh my goodness. I did not expect to win that one. All right, so there you guys have it with no cat sack, and the deck is fun. We went three and three with the deck here. Let's go ahead and pull up the stats. Um, yeah, so win win rate fifty percent, three three. Um, in in ranked right now, which again I haven't quite fine tuned it, and also meta has is all over the place, so we don't know if claim the firstborns are even worth really playing yet. Just all this kind of stuff. So the deck is fun. I do feel like there's probably too many two ofs to really kind of make it consistent. Uh, every card did something amazing at some point during the game, and so I like it. I think it's fun. I think it's powerful. I do. Uh, I, I, I am kind of in between on whether or not this deck is crazy powerful or if it's just something that's going to be like tier three or tier two. Um, 
I, I, I mean, like a, a different variations of it as well. I don't think this one deck, this quite get up to tier one. Uh, but can you make a Mardu sacrifice deck up to tier one before rotation actually happens? After rotation, we lose Mayhem Devil, Cruel Celebrant, Priest Forgotten Gods, um, and Hunted Witness. We get to keep a lot of pieces for this deck. Uh, Bastion of Remembrance, awesome. Call, death, call of Death Dweller. Losing Mayhem Devil is a big deal. Um, we don't know if we actually have any other uh, effects like this Cruel Celebrant. Having multiples is the way that you can actually make our Risk Cred style decks actually work well. But Mothra being able to create lots of lots of uh, you know just consistent synergies going with it. So I, I don't know. Overall, I think the deck is fun. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much and bye-bye.